very special day and you obviously must be noticing that behind me is the Reverend Dr. Clayton Cobb and Dr. Jeannie Cobb and this is the last day we will celebrate with Jeannie there will be a lot in this service to help us appreciate how much she has blessed us God has blessed us all so let us pray Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, and blessed be, be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to you all hearts are open, open all desires known, known and, and from, from you no secrets, secrets are hid. hid. Cleanse, Cleanse the, the thoughts, thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that we may perfectly love you and, and worthily magnify, magnify your, your holy name, name through, through Jesus Christ, our, Christ Lord. our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen, amen. a reading from paul's letter to the romans i appeal to you therefore brothers and sisters by the mercies of god to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Good morning, my name is Peter Gothold, and I am Jeannie's son, and this is a reading from Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. 
Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. I love you, Mom. Very proud of you. Congratulations. Come up and see us sometime. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Why don't you pray with me? Oh Lord, grant us thoughts that would turn into prayers. Grant us prayers that would turn into life. And grant us a life that would turn into a love for you and for all the world. For Christ's sake, amen. Amen. Well, let me say it's a privilege to have been asked to preach this day. For as you know, I'm a really great admirer of Jeannie and all of her gifts. And on this, her last Sunday at St. Francis, let me say that you all have blessed her well these almost eight years. You have challenged her. You've frustrated her a little. You've also certainly encouraged her. And I can tell you, she will miss this place. She will miss all of you. And so as she retires and joins me in this next chapter of our lives, it seems very appropriate to recognize her touch on so many, and this church and all those other churches where she served, to recognize and celebrate all of her gifts. For certainly we need to note her, this voice that she brings, her talent as a singer and soloist. She blesses us well. Her expertise as a choral director in the ability to fashion together a bunch of voices into a choir. There's certainly her knowledge and leadership as it comes with her doctorate in liturgy and in worship. And maybe most of all, what you know best is her heart and how she cherishes all of us. For as you know, there is no one else like her. But the truth is, it's also a, say, a day to say goodbye, and goodbyes are always tender. Yet I can assure you that Jeannie would want all of you to trust yourselves in what's ahead. You're, you're going to be all right. You are a gifted congregation. You're generous and you're open. You're still going to be the church. And speaking for her, I would simply say, just show up. Just keep showing up and do your part. God will do the rest. 
it does bring to mind that story of the choir director who was leaving, going on to other things, and on her last tender Sunday, a woman came up to her clearly inconsolable, tears streaming down her face, and wanting to be helpful, the director tried to reassure her. She told the woman everything was going to be okay. She was sure the next director would be even better, to which the woman blurted out, that's what they said last time. <laughs> Jeannie would tell you this morning that you're going to like Mark Bennett. He's going to be terrific. He will. But on to the text of this day, this 12th chapter of Romans, particularly this first verse. Paul writes, he says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Worship. Spiritual worship. It's, it's what centers us. It is what defines us. But recognize Paul isn't just talking about this space, this hour, this sermon, these sacraments, these prayers. He's saying worship is bigger still. He's saying worship is all of life. For God's greatest hunger God's deepest desire is to meet each of us in all of those places where we find ourselves. In here and out there. Places of terror and pain. Places of grace and wonder. God is wanting us to know that all of those moments are holy also. All of those thoughts, all those places we go, the things we say and do, all of that is what we present to God because all of it is worship. And when this truth begins to sink in, it begins to dawn on us that worship is not just this moment on a Sunday, but it's every moment. It's today, it's tomorrow, it's the next day. Paul is saying when we begin to get our minds around that, then that is when we'll begin to be transformed. That is what will begin to change us. It will change how we live, how we work and eat and dance and sing spend our money, relate to each other, how we grieve and fight and laugh. Listen again to these first two verses, but this time from Eugene Peterson's The Message Bible. He writes, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. You're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work, you're walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God and you'll be changed from the inside out. I like that. Fix your attention on God and you will be changed from the inside out. The Revised Standard Version uses the word transformed instead of change, but it's the same word. It's also in Greek the same word in Mark's Gospel used to describe Jesus' moment of transfiguration. That is a complete, radical recentering of the self. It's a different way of being and thinking. And in those quiet moments when we're, when we're honest, isn't that what we all want? Isn't that why we come to worship? Now, I realize there may be those who say they don't really see much of a need for change. They look at themselves and the world around them, and they say, what, what's wrong with this? They say, I've learned to settle for what I have. Who I am, I make up my own mind, I do what I want. Why is that so bad? This is my life. Why do I need to be transformed? And my only response is, so how's that working for you? <laughs> Certainly, the spiritual life can never be forced we can only invite, we can appeal, we can share the truth that we know. So again, to the question, why do I need to be transformed? Why is worship important? You have to look at your life and you have to decide. You have to decide. No one else can do it for you. But I can tell you, for me, when I try to go it alone without God, when I th think of my life as only about me, it never seems to work. I get angry too easily. 
My life fills with prejudices and assumptions. I look at others around me with suspicion, and my world gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And I feel less joyful and certainly less grateful. And I can say, because I see it in me, I also see it in the world around me. And maybe you do too. I mean, and all those things, especially that start out good, at least we think they are, but so often turn into things that are bad. Like when debate suddenly becomes belittling. When help becomes coercion. When justice turns into terrorism. Love into libido. Liberation into tyranny. Education into rationalization. Does the world need to be transformed? Does our country, does our community? A lot of us would say, yes. The world needs a lot of transformation. But let us remember that Paul says it starts with us. It starts with us. Martin Seligman is a social psychologist who has researched the issues of boredom and depression. Not that I know anyone who's ever been bored or depressed. But he says, as a society, as a culture, we have lost our sense of connection to anything that's greater than ourselves. We're disconnected from that which is transcendent and good, from that which can command our devotion and our allegiance. And we've done so because we have reduced all of life into the single smallest common denominator, the self. And he concludes that the self is just too small a package to carry the weight of the human hunger for meaning and glory and transcendence. Could this be why the Greek word for id, that is the self, which Freud coined to describe ourselves at our most significant moments, is actually paradoxically also the root for the word idiot? So the question is, so how do you find sanity? How do you find this kind of honesty, this transformation we hunger for? Where can we experience this kind of change? And Paul says it's right here in worship. We find it by giving ourselves not to the lesser gods that promise everything and deliver nothing, but by giving ourselves to the one true God who resurrects that which is dead and lifeless, The God who forgives sins and washes us clean, who fills us with Holy Spirit and sends us to be different in the world. Worship is life because it invites us to experience God's presence and be aware of something more, so big, so powerful, that it changes us. Changes the way we live, how we think and feel. It changes what truly matters, how we see ourselves and others. So rather than thinking of worship as a place to get your batteries charged or a holy pep rally to pump yourself up to the rest of the week, Paul is inviting us to go deeper. To think of worship as a place where you can name that which is deepest within you. Where we can remember that we really are beloved of God. It's like the key scene in a play where suddenly everything becomes clear and all the characters are seen in the true light. It's like a a rainbow that reveals all the colors that are always present, but, in, but not always seen in ordinary light. Worship is where not only we see the truth about ourselves, we learn to see the truth in each other, in our humanness, our differences, our gifts, our foibles. As in no other place, it is in worship we see those around us and we call each other brothers and sisters each created in the image of God, citizens of a holy nation, without forgetting at the same time they're just ordinary folk like us with real life struggles and problems that any collection of human beings possess. Which means in worship we learn kind of a double vision. We see others and ourselves as flawed and broken, but also as chosen and beloved. And I'm not just talking about those that are like us, those we love or those we agree with. I'm talking about those who are not like us, who confound us. But that kind of experience takes training. It takes repetition. It takes practice. So we come to worship week after week. Really, it's a dress rehearsal for the week to come. And I can tell you, if choirs need rehearsal, 
so do also the children of God. So what would that kind of worship look like on a Thursday afternoon? Imagine a supervisor of an insurance company. She's a Christian, and she's this day going to conduct one of the annual reviews for one of her employees, a man with certain job responsibilities who's performed some of them well and others things need to be improved. But because she has been in worship, she sees more than just this. She has sung Psalm 95. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Kneel before the Lord, our maker. He is our God. We are the people of his pastures. She's reached across the aisle and taken the hands of strangers, saying, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. She's heard the scriptures that tell how God said, let us make humankind in our image. She knows then that this is not just an employee. This is a child of God, and she must speak in a way that honors that. Doesn't mean she will speak only sweetness and sugar. She will tell the truth. And this will inevitably involve pointing out weaknesses as well as strengths. But everything she says will be shaped by what her faith has taught her. This is not just a, a business exercise. This is a chance to honor this person, to speak to him in a way that builds up the love of God and neighbor. That's what we practice here. That's how worship is transforming. So where do we do this? How do we connect this moment to all those other moments? How, again, does this transformation happen? Paul says this in worship, but I think it's also as we listen, it happens as we pray, and especially as we sing. Now, I, I am grateful for Paula and for Jude and for all of us who preach and teach over and over. And as one of those preachers, let me also say, maybe more importantly, I'm grateful for our musicians. Far more powerful than any sermon is that moment when we can sing together and breathe together. Where there's the blending of voices and sound and harmony, where there's the integrating of body and soul, of head and heart, which is why Jeannie stands here each Sunday looking out at all of us and continually invites us to sing, to lift up our voices, to offer ourselves in worship, and let this music bless us. Now, I understand why some people choose not to sing, you know. They say the hymns are pitched too high. It's, they're just not musical, they say. All right, they can't follow all the notes and measures. But let me remind us, more than anywhere else in our lives, these hymn texts call us to live beyond ourselves. They call us to something more. They call us to transformation. And if you don't sing, how are you going to be changed? As one person put it, I sing because these hymns sound like what following Christ is like. Now, I haven't really addressed the gospel reading today, and if you think about it, this story of Peter's confession tends to offer a kind of sequence for the spiritual life. I mean, you think about it. Um, we hear the gospel, we come to that moment of belief, and then we confess that belief, and then finally we follow and begin to live as a disciple. And you got to admit, there's kind of a logic to all that. But logic aside, my experience is transformation happens in exactly the opposite way. Think about it. We drag ourselves into worship one day, and we can't tell you why we're here. Just that something in us needed to be here, some longing to turn loose. And we find ourselves in worship, and we're standing, singing songs we don't even know. We're shaking hands, welcoming strangers we've never met before. We put our money in the plate because everyone else is doing it. We, too, want to be generous. We even offer our voices, singing words we're not sure we understand. We say prayers we're not even sure we've even thought of. We recite a confession of faith we don't really believe. Until one day after we do it over and over and over, it dawns on us. It's true. It's true. It's what defines us. It's what sends us. We didn't start there, but it's where worship brings us. Peter followed Jesus because Jesus asked him to, not because he believed. He confessed him to be the Messiah with no idea what it meant. 
And it wasn't certainly until Jesus was, after he was crucified and risen after being forgiven on the beach in Galilee and called yet one more time that finally, and we see in the book of Acts, Peter stands on Pentecost morning and as a believer preaches the word of God and people respond. That's why we sing. Not because we understand. Not because we're talented. Not because we already believe. But because it helps us believe. Helps us worship. Reminds us who we are and how we're to live. Isn't that what we really want? So listen again. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. You're sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for God. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. But fix your attention on God and you'll be changed from the inside out. Changed from the inside out. Now that's something to sing about. May that be God's gift for all of us. Amen and amen. Mother. <laughs> Thank you, Clayton, for your amazing sermon as you put on your amazing mask. <laughs> so today I want to give you a gift, ah. thanking you for all you've been for us at St. Francis. For those of you who've been to Taze, Clayton played the mandolin. For those of you who noticed during a Sunday worship, Clayton was playing the guitar, or always being in the choir. And throughout these years, you've preached once in a while. And today you preached off the charts. Thank you. This is a gift for you. And I wanted to celebrate that with Jeannie standing right next to you. And being the man of God that you are, of course, ah. across. This could be inside or outside. Love that. So Gorgeous. thank you for all that you've given us. You have been a servant leader, mm. very humble, and I so appreciate who you are. And I love and respect you both, and there's more to follow in this service. Mm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. Thank you. And of course, we would hug if we could, but we can't, so we shan't. <laughs> okay, thank you. And now let us say together the creed that we have inherited. We believe, believe in, in one God, God the Father, Father the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, earth of all that is seen and unseen. We, we believe, believe in, in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only Son of God, God eternally begotten, begotten of the Father, God from God, God light, light from light, true God from true God, God begotten not made, of one, one being with the Father, through, through him all things were made. For us and for us our salvation, salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
sustaining God, hear our prayers, spoken and unspoken. For civil and religious leaders, for those working for peace and justice, for those working with the poor and the unsheltered, bless them with integrity and truth, compassion and love. God of wisdom, hear our prayers. For all who serve in our civil services, especially first responders, and in the armed and foreign services and their families, especially Drew, Michael, Mark, Maya and Tom, Will, Scott, Michael, Jonathan, and Steve. God of peace, hear our prayers. For all facing challenges, especially Andrea, Barbara, Bob and Jane, Siri, Anne, Sally, Nathan, Gail, the Miles family, Molly, Marjorie, Carla Nicole, Lisa, Bruce, Anne, Steve, and all those we name to you now. God of all healing, hear our prayers. For those killed or injured in acts of terrorism, injustice, gun violence, abuse, or prejudice of any kind, and from the consequences of diseases and natural disasters. We pray for the healing of those suffering from the coronavirus and those ministering to them. God of protecting love, hear our prayers. For all who anticipate birthdays, anniversaries, and joyful events. God of all we have, hear our prayers for all those who have died, especially those we name to you now. God of comfort and grace, hear our prayers. Gracious God, thank you for always doing more than we could ask for or even imagine. Help us be faithful to our Christian calling, especially in this world that needs people of justice, of peace, and dreamers for a world of one heart. We ask this in the name and power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God we, we confess, confess that we have sinned, sinned against, against you in thought, thought word, word, and deed. deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 And the peace of the living Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Welcome. Welcome into this special day when we honor our Jeannie, our music director. As you've heard, this is her last day with us. And we are in Thanksgiving. And I hope during this time, when you've seen Jeannie sitting here and you've seen her listening to Clayton, her dear husband, that you share within your own heart moments that are memories of gratefulness, moments that just make your heart smile. Bring that all into this, into this moment today. So thank you for being a part of this Jeannie Cobb thank you service. Yes, she will be retiring from St. Francis, but she will be going forward to thrive. May you thrive always seeking God's grace each day. 
Thank you for the ways you make St. Francis thrive. And God invites us to thrive in the hearing of God's word, in the hearing of the scriptures. Jeannie's son and daughter read them for us. We thank God for helping us thrive in the words that Clayton preached this day. And we thrive in the prayers and in the hymns and in all these moments that cause us to pause. We thrive in Jesus Christ. And we thrive in moments like every Sunday when we invite you to come and receive the body of Jesus Christ in the consecrated wafers at 11, 11.15, 11.30, 11.45 in our St. Francis Garden. So please text me if you haven't already or email me. Every Sunday I share a joke or two and today's are in genie themes. <laughs> so the first one, because genie of course likes to cook and of course you know she loves music. What happens if you eat yeast and shoe polish? Every morning you'll rise and shine. <laughs> and Clayton can relate to this one. What's the difference between a guitar and a fish? You can't tuna fish. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> And now we're going to hear a very special, very special anthem that's the combination of our choir and alumni. But today, please continue to hold in your heart with thanksgiving all that Jeannie has meant for us because there's one more thing. And we will experience it and see it and hear it after the spiritual communion, before the final blessing.
God, through your goodness, we have this bread and wine to offer. They will become for us spiritual food. We, we bless, bless God, God forever. forever. God, receive our gifts for the work of your church. We, we bless, bless God, God forever. forever. God, you have blessed us with joy of the children and families and members of all ages of our parish. We thank you that we can be present spiritually around your table, no matter how near or far. We, we bless, bless God, God forever. God is here. We, we praise, praise God, God together. together. Let us say thank you to God. God, God has, has done, done so much for us. us. O oh God, you made all things and you blessed them. You, you gave us the earth to feed us, the sky to open our hearts, the water for us to drink. You blessed all those who came before us, and you bless us also. When it was time, you sent angels to Mary and Joseph to tell them about having a child whom they would call Jesus. Jesus would be the Savior of the world. And so we praise you with all the angels as we say. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. God, you made us, and the world, and everything in it. All, All the good we see comes, comes from you. You, you have, have always loved, loved us, us, but the people have not always loved you. You, you sent Jesus to show us how to, how to live and, and to bring us back to you again. again. He died for us on the cross and rose from the dead so your spirit can make us your people. We are here because on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. There he took some bread and gave thanks to you. He broke it into pieces and gave it to them and said, This is my body. Do this, Do this and, and know, know that, that I am with you. you. Later, he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to you. He shared it with them and said, This is my blood, which brings new life. Do, Do this, this and, know and know that, that I, am I am with you. We remember what Jesus has done for us. Jesus, Jesus died then was raised to new life by you, and is alive forever. Send your Holy Spirit upon this bread and wine, so it can be for us the body and blood of Jesus. Through this food, give us the strength to live as your people. Help us care for your world and for each other in the way that Jesus showed us. Help, Help us, us to, to love, love God, God, love others, serve, serve the world until he comes again with all your people in every time and every, and every land. land. We worship you, we praise you, we thank you, and we bless you. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us give this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation Deliver us, deliver us from, from evil, for thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and, the and the power and, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we share together 
in the presence of Jesus, wherever you are, in this moment now, let us embrace and receive Jesus. And so we pray together. My, My Jesus, Jesus, I, I believe, believe that you are truly present in the, in the blessed sacrament of the altar. altar. I, I love you above all things, things and long, long for you in my soul. Since, since I cannot I now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, heart as though you have already come. come. I embrace, embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. you. Never, Never permit me to be separated from you. you. Amen. Amen. Before our final blessing, we have a very special, important, talented offering of music, a surprise for Jeannie. Oh. Your baton is packed, you're ready to go. We're singing here inside our doors. We can't be there ourselves to say goodbye. Though the virus is raging, we want you safe. To that end, do what it takes. We'll miss you so darn much. We'll probably cry. So be well, enjoy retirement. Tell us that you'll be content. Hold close to your wonderful grandkids. Cause you're leaving to retirement. Look forward, don't look back again. God bless you as you go. You have brought us so much good, notes and words and faith and hugs, challenged us in ways beyond compare. Every song we sing, we'll think of you. Every prayer we pray, we'll pray for you. We'll treasure memories of these sweet years. So be well, enjoy retirement. Tell us that you'll be content. Hold close to your I hope you appreciated all that went into this amazing production that you just experienced. <laughs> <laughs> and now, may the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 And so we bless you, Jeannie. Would all of you hold your hands toward Jeannie wherever you are sitting? God, give Jeannie every grace that you know. She has given so much to us. 
Give her every grace you know that she can be filled again and renewed and enlivened so she can go forth now and thrive in her retirement. And we thank you, Jeannie, and we love you. And there would have been a standing ovation in the church. <laughs> and so now we will leave. <laughs> Come back.